So there's basically two main parts to this article, I Just Want to Be Average by Mike Rose. There's the teachers, and we have the teachers in the vocational ed program, and then we have the one good teacher. So we have a really big change that Rose went through, and we're going to look at the teachers. Then we also have the students. We have the students and where he was in the beginning, and then we have Rose at the end. So we're looking at teachers and students and kind of the entire educational system. Now, this article will apply to most of your essays or your, your memoirs if you uh, want to use that, but you don't have to. So let's start with the teachers and start with the beginning. On page one, we start with Dill, and we have Brother Dill. And Brother Dill, Brother Dill wasn't a very nice teacher. So on the first page, it says in the third body paragraph, Brother Dill, a troubled and unstable man. So let's just look at the adjectives that we have for Brother Dill. He was an unstable man who taught freshman English. Now we all know how important your English class is and how important I think writing is. So Mike Rose is telling us that his English teacher was unstable. And as we already know, Brother Dill used a pejorative with Mr. Rose. So that's not very nice. What else do we know about my uh, brother Dill. He was paranoid. His voice would rise in paranoid accusations. Occasionally he would lose control and shake or smack us. Smack us. Smack is another word for hit. So brother Dill actually hit or shook the students. Okay, so that's that's pretty um, that's pretty harsh. Let's read the next sentence. I hadn't been there two months, so he had been there less than two months when one of his brisk face turning slaps had my glasses sliding down the aisle. That means Brother Dill hit Mike Rose hard enough that his glasses came off his face and went down the aisle. Honestly, I can't imagine that. I'm not sure what at what age um, Mike Rose was in school, but I can't imagine that happening today. That that's crazy. But okay, that's some that's some pretty pretty stuff. Pretty pretty that's pretty amazing. So yeah, okay. Okay, physical education was also pretty harsh, so, um, yeah, there we go. So that's the kind of instructor that um, Brother Dill was. Brother Dill was paranoid, he was unstable, and he made acquisitions, and he actually hit people. Oh, look, Brother Dill is actually not the one that did the pejorative. See, I read that wrong. And this is how easy it is to read things wrong. This is the Brother Dill paragraph, and so I thought that it was Brother Dill, but it wasn't. The person that used the pejorative was the physical education teacher. I'm sorry, Brother Dill, if you're out there, I'm sorry for saying you did the pejorative because you didn't. Actually, we have the physical education instructor. So, here we go. The physical ed instructor, whose name we don't have, no name, no name instructor, no, no name. The no name physical ed instructor was actually the one that used the pejorative, not Brother Dill. And this, ladies and gentlemen, this is why paragraphing is so important. Because when you don't have clear paragraphing, you can confuse your readers. You know how I'm always telling you that your readers can get confused no matter how carefully they read? I've taught this article three different times and I've always said that it was Brother Dill. 
poor brother Dill, because I missed that. So paragraphing, paragraphing is so, so very important. This physical education, this should be in a completely different paragraph. Mike Rose, I'm just saying. Okay, let's look at Mr. Mitrio, Mitro Petros, Mitro Petros. And what kind of characteristics does he have? The physical ed instructor also was a bad instructor given that he used the pejorative. Okay, what did he do? Now this guy, he didn't use physical abuse like Brother Dill, but he wasn't a good instructor. It actually says that he <laughs> taught the same thing over and over again because he didn't know what he was doing and he crowed and preened. Look at this on page two. It says he would crow and preen and list for us the stars he'd brushed against. What does it mean to crow and preen? That's an idiom. It's an idiom that means brag. So he would say, oh, I met Angelia Jolie, or I saw Leonardo in the parking lot, except it wouldn't have been Angelia Jolie and Leonardo because they weren't around when this guy was around. But he brushed against them, so he didn't really know them. He was parking their cars. So basically, he was a braggart. Rose goes on to say, we'd ask questions and glance knowingly and snicker because they knew that he didn't know them and that fueled the poor guy to brag some more. So he was bragging. So he had little training in English. So he was teaching them English, sophomore English. How important is English? Sophomore English, but he had no training and he was parking cars. So that was his English teacher. So Brother Dill, freshman English, he was hitting the students, okay? Physical ed guy, he was insulting the students. Mr. Mitro Petros, he was, he had no idea what he was doing. Let's look at Mr. Montez. Mr. Montez was Spanish and what he did is he basically let the students do whatever they wanted to do. So in Mr. Montaz's class, the class was out of control. What he was doing is he was pretty much letting them do whatever they wanted. And we have here that they were throwing spitballs. Steve Fusco was throwing spitballs. Do you know what spitballs are? Spitballs are when you take a bunch of paper and you put it in your mouth and so you have all the paper and you put it together with spit and then you throw them at people. That's crazy. So then they were basically just being boys and fighting and taunting. It says Mike was taunting Billy. So they were yelling at each other and using maybe pejoratives. And what happened was one day Billy lost it, which means Billy lost control and fought back. And they were fighting and Mr. Mr. Montez just didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. He let it happen. So Billy and Mike got in a fight, a physical fight, two other students broke it up. So Mr. Montez let it happen. He didn't do anything. He just watched this chaos ensue in his classroom. So here we have Brother Dill beating up the students. And here we have Mr. Montez letting the students beat each other up. So talk about extremes. It's crazy. Then we have Brother Slattery, and Brother Slattery is the only one that Mike Rose says even tried, basically. This is in paragraph one, two, three, four, and he says at the end of the paragraph that there were a few teachers who worked hard at education. So apparently, young Brother Slattery worked hard, he combined a stern voice with weekly quizzes. So he was trying, but you can tell that he still didn't do a good job because it says to try to pass along, to try to pass along. So if you're trying to pass along information, then Micro still doesn't feel like he's being taught. 
And also it says a skeletal outline. So if it's a skeleton, then there's no flesh, flesh on the bones. And this is an idiom when we have the bare bones. It's another nice little idiom. The bare bones of something, or in this case, he says a skeletal. How are we going to spell that? Where did it go? Skeletal. A skeletal outline or bare bones, which means just the, the bones of something. There's no meat. So just the minimum. So even though he was trying really hard, they still just got the minimum. Okay, just the minimum. So these are the instructors that basically Mike Rose is talking about. Now, there is a change. Okay, there is a change. Before we go into the change and we talk about Jack McFarland, and Jack McFarland is the teacher that actually had good characteristics, we can also talk about some of the classroom things. Okay, if we look why these things happened and what happened right under the Brother Slattery paragraph. So this is paragraph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It says in the very first paragraph, none of us, us being the students, was groomed for the classroom. So the students themselves didn't know how to be students and the teachers didn't know how to teach them how to be students. The students weren't good students. It's, uh, he gives a big long list of the things they didn't know. He says, it wasn't just that I didn't know things, because he didn't. He didn't know content. He didn't know algebra. He didn't know Spanish. He didn't know English. So there was content that he didn't know. But also, he goes on to say, I had developed various faulty and inadequate ways of doing the things. So it wasn't just that he didn't have that information, but he didn't know how to do it. He didn't have the right ways. What have we learned? What other articles have we, have we studied? Think about fixed mindset. Think about growth mindset. Think about critical thinking. There are no connections here. He's not making any connections. He didn't even know how to make connections. So it wasn't that he didn't have the knowledge. Yes, he didn't have the knowledge, but he didn't even know how to get the knowledge. And the instructors here, yes, Dill, Brother Dill is hitting the students, which is terrible, of course. And Mr. Mitropi, Mitropi, Mitropetros, Mr. M, I'm going to call him Mr. M, Mr. M is um, bragging and he doesn't know what he's doing. And Mr. Montez isn't doing anything. But even so, even with that, the students themselves don't know how to do it. So that's what he's saying. Then he goes on, worse yet, the years of defensive tuning out. Okay, so he's tuning out defensively. So he's defensive. So he's not even trying to learn in elementary school. Had given me a way to escape quickly while seeming at least half alert. Okay. I had developed further into a mediocre student. He's a mediocre student. He's a mediocre student. Just want to be average. And he came into his own socially. So there is, we're going to go into the students here. But here we're talking about just being mediocre. Not being excellent, just being mediocre. And why? Part of it's the education and part of it's the teachers. Okay, so this is the teacher section. So since we're talking about the teachers, let's go ahead and keep talking about the teachers. So let's find and look at the good teachers because there is a change. There is a huge, huge change. And this is why it's so appropriate for our essay because in the essay that we're doing, 
We're focused on the change. So where then in this article does the change happen? It happens in the end with McFarlane, Jack McFarlane. And where does Jack McFarlane start? Here we go, on page five. Yep, page five, the second full body paragraph. Jack McFarlane couldn't have come into my life at a better time. And Jack McFarlane, Jack McFarlane is a completely different kind of teacher. He's a completely different kind of teacher than Brother Dill, than Brother Slatery, than Mr. M, or Mr. Montas, or no name physical ed teacher. So what do we know about Jack McFarland? Well, he's teaching senior English, okay? Now, he's, he's not very attractive. Look at this paragraph. His teeth were stained. He tucked his sorry tie in between the third and fourth buttons of his shirt and his pants were chronically wrinkled. So he's not, he's not trying to look good. He didn't change his dress four times before he decided what to wear and put back on the first dress that he had. Well, he wasn't wearing a dress anyway because he was a man. But he wasn't worried about whether or not he should wear his glasses or not wear his glasses before he did a YouTube video. He wasn't worried about that. Jack McFarlane, he just did what he did. So he wasn't worried about what he looked like. It actually says... The students thought he slept in his car, so he was not worried about what he looked like. But he goes on to say, they didn't then worry about what he slept or whether he slept at all because of how he taught. He was so engaged with the students. He cared so much about the students that what he looked like and what he did, that didn't even matter. It's a pretty good teacher. So they wrote, he talks about, what else do we know about? Um, he would pace the room, so he's energetic. Okay, look in paragraph one, two, three. It says, he would pace the room, jiggling a piece of chalk in his cupped hand, using it to scribble on the board the names of all the writers. So he's energetic. So he's messy. This is what we know about Farland. He's messy. This is an S. But he's energetic. Okay, he's energetic. He also assigns a lot of work. Now, why is assigning a lot of work important? If he assigns a lot of work, he's got to grade all that work, which means he's really involved with his students. He analyzed poems with us, so he's involved with the students. Okay. Compare this, being involved with the students, to your Mr. Montez, who's sitting at the desk and letting the boys fight. So that's a very clear, very clear difference. What else does he do? He, they immersed him in language. Let's see. Um, it talks about more students here. What else do we see about, about Jack Farland? Let's turn the page on page 6. He talks to the students in his office. He knows the students. Look on page six at the end of the full, second full body paragraph. McFarland looked down at me. I was seated in his office and said, listen, you can write. So we have the no-name physical ed teacher who just sees Mike Rose as a pejorative. He just sees him as a stereotype. He just sees him as another Italian kid like so many Italian kids. And then we have Jack Farland who sees Mike Rose as somebody who can write. So we have these two different characteristics in this article, and this article is really showing the difference between these teachers and these teachers. And this is a change, and this is something that you can really look at and really dive deep into, and this is something you could really apply to your own memoir. Hey everybody, so that was Mike Rose, I Just Want to Be Average, 
and it was for my class. If you liked it, leave a like. I'm new with this whole YouTube thing. This is a new setup. Lighting is really hard and I'm really not good at it, but I'm trying really hard. I am trying to get a hundred subscribers to my channel so that I can get a custom URL so it's a little bit easier to have it on my cards. So if you want, subscribe to my channel. I plan to have a lot more video lectures on um, classroom kind of things and I have a lot of upcoming really exciting things. So if you liked it, leave a like and if you enjoyed it, subscribe so you can watch all my videos. Have a great day!